Make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. After the defeat of Omega Shenron, Goku was riding along Shenlong's head as he was at finally at peace. Now during this time, Shenron does all the Dragon Balls go inside of Goku's body, as he pretty much is one with Shenron. Now Goku does wish that he could go back and fix some certain things. Now unbeknownst to Goku, is that since he is fused with Dragon Balls, this version of Goku can also do wishes as well. And that exactly happens. Goku gives himself his own wish fulfilled, and Goku then remembers opening up his eyes, and he was in a strange tube. Now, Goku doesn't know where he is or what's going on. He maybe fell asleep, but he sees other Saiyans walking around. He's really confused. Now, he couldn't really speak or anything at this time, but he was really confused. He doesn't know what's going on. Now, they, now they did say during this time that his power level was unreadable. Every time that they tried reading it, the scouter would break. Now, they assumed that this was just a faulty reading and that maybe his power level was not able to be sensed, but he was probably a freak and faulty. But, the events will still happen all up to the same with Bardock saving Goku, but now Goku here does remember his parents. Now during this time here, Goku can't really do anything, as Goku knows that maybe this is when Frieza destroyed the planet. Now Goku wants to do everything he can to try to help, but he can't in this type of body and form. He's way too young and he's an infant, so he can't walk, he can't move or do nothing. Though he knows how to do it, he just physically can't do it. But Goku now knows that what happened with the Saiyans and that his father Bardock sacrificed his life for Goku. Now Goku would then fly across space as he awakened seeing Grandpa Gohan. Now Goku here actually cried, but not tears of sadness or baby crying, but tears of joy. As he hasn't seen his Grandpa Gohan in so many years. It's been nearly 40 to 50 years for Goku since he's seen him. And he's so relieved that he sees him again. Now Goku over the next couple days is pretty much able to decipher that maybe since he fused with the Dragon Balls, they were able to fulfill his wish, and they weren't able to send him back in time. But he doesn't know if he has his powers and abilities yet, as he can't really do anything right now, but Goku knows that he needs to control the Zuzaro state because when Grandpa Gohan is there, he doesn't want him to die. Now years would pass on. Now this is when Goku, and during this timeline in the original, turns into a great ape and kills Grandpa Gohan. But Goku himself here has learned that he can use all of his powers and abilities. So what he does is he knows that he does need his tail for Super Saiyan 4. Now he doesn't know if he can go Super Saiyan 4. He doesn't want to try yet because he's still, he's still really young and he's a little bit nervous that he might push himself and, and die. So, but when the time does come for the moon, Goku just doesn't look at the moon. Goku would just sleep that night and not look at the moon, as he need look at the moon to be able to be activated into the Great Ape State. So Goku knows how to dodge it, and he knows how to avoid it. Now Goku here, would I say that Grandpa Gohan is alive? Now Goku here would actually talk to Grandpa Gohan and tell him that, you know, hey, I'm actually really strong, but would Goku tell Grandpa Gohan that he's from... You know, 50 years in the future, and, you know, he's done all these adventures. I don't think Goku would do that because he doesn't want to affect time. As he remembers what Trunks said a long time ago, that even the smallest thing can affect time. Now, he does notice that Grandpa Gohan is alive. Is that going to mess everything up? Goku doesn't think so. A couple more years have passed, and Goku's around 10 years old. Now, when Goku, of course, now, I think he's around 10 or 12. Now, Goku at this time is in the around the same age as his kid self was in GT. Goku can use all of his forms, only Super Saiyan 3 he has issues with. He can use Super Saiyan 4, and he was able to adapt his body to all his power. Now, Goku here was good to go, but he's actually pretty excited that he can grow up his body and become an adult again. But now, Goku learns that he has all of his abilities, all of his powers, and everything else. So, Goku says, well, maybe... Maybe this is a second chance, or maybe this was the wish that I granted. Now, of course, Bulma would still appear and ask for the Dragon Ball. Now, Goku does remember seeing Bulma and how much younger she looks compared to her older self then. So, Goku would actually hand her the Dragon Ball. 
just right away just hand it to her and say hey I actually want to come along with you we can help search the Dragon Balls together I know a lot about them now Bulma would of course let Goku go on and together they would go on their adventures only this time Goku obviously knows Bulma a lot more he knows how Bulma acts he knows how she is so Bulma actually gets along a lot better with Goku though there is still some goofy moments that Goku does now during this time Goku would still meet Yamcha and he would still meet Master Roshi and all the other all the other Z fighters who were before that and obviously he would not kill any of them but he would obviously fight them and defeat them easily now he would want them because he knows they're all gonna be very good friends later on he lets them all go a lot of enemies Goku actually doesn't kill but there is one enemy that Goku knows about and that's the Red Ribbon Army he knows because he had to deal with the androids and if Goku remembers correctly that these androids were basically taken off the DNA especially Cell. Cell was especially right from Goku and all them so Goku thinks to himself and says well if I personally go after the Red Ribbon Army and I find that Dr. Jiro guy and I'm able to pretty much kill him then there wouldn't be any androids because then the Red Ribbon Army wouldn't really be able to advance as far as they did with robotics so that's what Goku does. When they did get captured by the Red Ribbon Army, Goku would easily break out of the prison, and he would easily destroy the entire facility where Dr. Jiro actually was at, as he was studying. Now, since Dr. Jiro was gone, there realistically would not be any androids. Maybe in the future, but not right now. There is no androids anymore. There is no Cell. There is no Red Ribbon Army. So that means that there is no Hero 1 and Hero 2 from Dragon Ball Superhero. And there is no Cell Max as well. So sadly, Android 17 and Android 18 are humans somewhere, and they're enjoying lives. But they are not bloodthirsty androids. But now Goku here would obviously meet Master Roshi. Now Bulma would obviously try to show her, try to show herself off to get the Dragon Ball, but Goku actually states, "Hey, how about you and me fight? And if I win, then I can use the Dragon Ball." Master Roshi would agree, and Goku would force Master Roshi to go into his full power state. But even that would be nothing for Goku, of course. But now Goku states, I really, really appreciate your help, Master Roshi, and we win the Dragon Ball. Now, once when they do gather all the Dragon Balls, now remember, they did kind of stop that adventure for a long while. Now, Goku does remember Kami, and he does remember King Kai, and everybody else. He remembers all those people. So, in this time, Goku here would go meet Kami, and he would go meet King Kai. Even though King Kai was completely perplexed why Goku was there, and who was he? But Goku would state that, well, he actually heard about him, and he wants to be good friends with him. Same with Kami. Now, the King Piccolo problem does still arise. Now, during this time, Goku knows that King Piccolo birthed Piccolo that we all know and love. So, when Goku does find King Piccolo, who is very old and shriveled, his children will try to stop him. But, Goku would, of course, get in the way and beat King Piccolo so badly and nearly kill him, resulting in him spitting out the egg. Now, Goku smiled as he knows that that's soon going to be Piccolo. Now, Goku here would still meet Chi-Chi. Yes, Goku would still want to meet Chi-Chi because that's his wife. And Goku here is a little bit more mature. And Goku has matured a lot more, especially from his younger days with Chi-Chi. And he appreciates Chi-Chi a lot more for what she does in their lifetime. So Goku spends a lot more time with Chi-Chi. As you guys remember, Goku does not go off for four plus years, five plus years to go train with Kami. Goku still keeps his training up at home, but he does spend his full time with Chi-Chi as they grow up into teenagers to young adults. Now, Goku knows that within the next couple of years, he knows that Vegeta and that one Nappa guy is going to be showing up very soon. And then that is when he's going to try to get Vegeta to join their good side and obviously maybe even get the Nappa guy on their side. And he also remembers Frieza, which is a big pain in the side, but he'll handle that later. Now we last kicked off with Goku is preparing for the Saiyans, but hold on a minute. What about Piccolo? What's going to happen with Piccolo? Well, if you guys remember, I'm not starting the Saiyans yet. Goku knows that in a couple of years they are going to show up, aka his brother Raditz first. Now Goku knows that he does want to save Raditz. He doesn't want to kill his brother, and he knows that Raditz was in the wrong. Not to mention Raditz is weak compared to him, not like he can do anything. Maybe he can try to help him. Maybe try to see him turn to the good side. Because Vegeta was able to do it, Piccolo, maybe Raditz can too. He for sure is not going to kill Vegeta, as he needs Vegeta. Vegeta is his best friend in the future. 
and he knows the good that Vegeta does for them. Now, the thing with Piccolo. If you guys remember, Goku knew that Piccolo, or Demon King Piccolo, was going to spit out Piccolo Jr., which Goku knew that was going to happen. Now, Piccolo Jr. would still meet him at the tournament. Now, Goku would still show up, as he still does want to fight here and there and, you know, have fun, but he's also been training his friends as well. You see, Goku during this time has already met King Kai and everybody else already. So what would Goku do? Well, he wants them to be as strong as possible. So he would take Krillin, Yamcha, and yes, Goku would also befriend Tien before the tournament. And he would also bring Tien with them to King Kai, which this would definitely make Tien a, really, a, a lot faster to becoming a really good guy and becoming an ally to them. So, for the next two years, Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien actually train under King Kai. Now, of course, Goku knows that Piccolo definitely knows as well, since Piccolo can sense energy, how powerful Goku is. Now, Piccolo, a lot of people sleep on Piccolo's potential and how far Piccolo can push himself. Piccolo has always been able to keep up with the Z Fighters, even to Super now, as he has his new forms. So Piccolo here has pushed himself far past his limit, training harder than ever. Now, once when Yamcha, Krillin, and Tien all come out from King Kai, it's been two years, the tournament was ready. Krillin, I would give pretty much they're all nearly even in power. I would say that Tien's probably the stronger one, as Tien's always been a little bit stronger than Krillin in general. But they're all pretty much even. So I would give them all a power level of Tien, would definitely have a power level of around 2,000. Krillin would have a power level of maybe around 1,900, maybe. Uh, and Yamcha would have a power level of around 1,500 or 1,700. They're all very similar in power. And yes, all of them can use the Kaioken technique. Now, Krillin was actually the only one with the pure enough heart to be able to learn the Spirit Bomb. Now, Krillin has actually taken his training very seriously, and he's actually learned to control the Kaioken a little bit more. We're giving our boy Krillin some love. Now, Krillin takes his training very seriously, and he looks up to Goku a lot, and he wants to impress Goku during their fight. That is Krillin's dream. Now, if you guys remember, Goku in the original, while it is true he had a power level of around 8,000, he only trained with King Kai for maybe around 6 months, about half a year, roughly. Because it took him almost half a year to get to King Kai, if you guys remember, because he had a cross snake way. So he only had a certain months of training. He never had a full year, but yet he was able to push himself to Kaioken times 4 at his maximum. So, Krillin does have a lower power level, but he has learned to control Kyle Ken a lot better. Though King Kai states to not go higher than two times. But now, the fighting would begin. Now, of course, a lot of the beginner fighters, they would get slapped around by everybody. Goku knows that Piccolo Jr. is there, and watching from afar. Piccolo is impressed how far these humans have come in terms of power. Very impressed. Now, during this time, Piccolo would actually be able to defeat Yamcha. Because remember, Yamcha's terrified of him. And same with Krillin. But Krillin would actually go out with a hard battle against Piccolo. Now Piccolo here is actually the strongest one. Piccolo has a power level of around four to 5,000, which is not far stretching if Piccolo has truly pushed himself over these past five years. Five to six years. Now, even with Kyle Ken, if you guys remember, their power levels are so low that using Kyle Ken like that greatly diminishes their stamina. And Piccolo now knows when to expect this new technique. He never thought that humans could possess a powerful move like that, but they do. The most who would give him the most trouble is definitely Tien, who is the strongest. It would be a really close battle, but Piccolo has some techniques of his own, and he would outlast Tien in terms of stamina, but he would not knock him out, he would trick Tien and knock him off the ring. Now, of course, Chi-Chi was there, of course, and yes, Chi-Chi and Goku, they're still, still together and they're still doing a thing, uh, Gohan is not born just yet, so we're going to wait on that. But now during this time, Piccolo would then challenge Goku, who Goku was the next contender. Now, Goku never actually participated in the tournament, but because he feels like it will just be not fair. He wanted the other guys to have fun. As, remember, Goku here is strong. Now, Goku right now is an adult. He has been training, he has been getting stronger, so this version of Goku is extremely busted. He's far stronger than the likes of Super Buu. He's far stronger than the likes of any of them, even in base form. 
if you want to look up on how powerful GT Goku is, go look up some actual good videos in detail who will tell you how strong they are. Even Kid Goku, after the Buu Saga, after everything else, is stronger than Kid Buu. Which is insanity. How powerful he is. Not to mention he has Super Saiyan 4, he can use a full power state as well, it's, it's crazy. Now Goku here would fight Piccolo, he's severely suppressed. And Piccolo would then showcase a new technique that he has. Piccolo would first go into his giant form, which would buff his power level from around 5,000 to around 6 to 7,000. But Goku would easily dodge the attack and knock him over. Now then Piccolo would then charge up a special beam cannon. Now this is a I mean, brand new technique, he only has one shot, and Goku lets him charge the move up. Now you guys remember, this move greatly increases your strength. This would boost his power level up to 8 to nearly 10,000. It's over 9,000. But now, I hope you guys like that meme, but now, Goku here would easily slap the beam away with his finger like it was nothing. And he was very impressed by how strong Piccolo was. He was far stronger than he was when they first fought, and he would easily knock him off the ring. And he promises he wants Piccolo to come back stronger and they'll fight again someday. Maybe they can even be allies. Now Piccolo would then laugh and fly off, as he doesn't really care about the tournament. Now since Goku won, he did win a lot of prize money, and him and Chi Chi would then get officially married. Now as you all know, Gohan was born, and Goku does vow to himself that he does want, and he knows, Gohan's incredible potential. He's definitely going to take it a lot more seriously. Now he knows that Gohan's not going to be a true fighter like he is, he wants to become a scholar. But... He wants Gohan to be strong in case anything happens to him that he might forget or something happens. He knows how strong Gohan can become, even with slight training. Now, obviously, all these years would pass on. Five years later, you would have Raditz, who would crash, and quickly, Goku would already be there, as Goku remembers the location. So before, Goku would even go to the Kami house, he would show up and meet Raditz. Now, Raditz would try to explain to him, Goku already knows who he is, and Goku states, look, brother, we don't need to fight. All right? it's, it's not worth fighting. All right? I know that you have ties with Vegeta and that Nappa guy. And I know you have ties with Frieza. But I can beat them. You know, I can beat Frieza. You don't need to be held accountable anymore. Now, Raditz, of course, is prideful and he wouldn't listen. He would state, then fight me in battle. Which Raditz would. Guys, remember, Raditz has a max power over on 1,500, so even the Earthlings can fight Raditz. Krillin can fight him, and Yamcha can fight him, especially Tien, too. Piccolo can easily beat him. Now, the Z Fighters do arrive after sense the power level, but they just watch, knowing that Goku can handle this. Now, Goku would easily block all of Raditz's attack, and Raditz cannot do anything. He tried his Sunday attack, he tried everything he could, but he could not even match Goku at all. You would then try using a scouter to sense his power level, but Goku knows that that is actually a communicator to Vegeta and Nappa. So Goku wants to send a message to get them over here. Now Goku remembers that they did only show up because of the Dragon Balls, so Goku would state that. Goku would state, well, I'm actually going to use the Dragon Balls and their magical orbs that I can use to wish for anything I want. This would pique Vegeta and Nappa's interest, but Goku knows now, on the other side of the universe, it also piqued Frieza's interest. Now, this is what Goku wants, because Goku wants Frieza to go to Namek, and before Frieza could even do anything, Goku will appear and handle that problem. Remember, he knows where the original Namek is, as it's not new Namek yet. And King Kai knows where it is as well. Goku knows Frieza's power level and can travel across the whole universe. If he can go see Beerus and Whis across galaxies and everything else, he can definitely go to Frieza's. Now, Raditz would actually give up. There's nothing else that he can do, and Goku would showcase by powering up. Raditz cannot sense energy, but he can feel the pressure. His scouter would shatter and explode. Goku would tell him, Listen, I'm a Super Saiyan, far stronger than you, but let me help you. Be a good guy. Do the, do the right thing. I know that there's good in you. Maybe you can help me fight Vegeta and Nappa. And this Frieza guy. And Raditz would agree. Goku does not kill Raditz here. Why would Goku want to kill his family member? Goku back then didn't understand Raditz and he kidnapped his son and severely hurt his friends. So that is why Goku did not have a choice to end his brother. But now this time, Goku's going to try to help him. Now, if you all remember, a year or two passes. 
Now, during this year or two, Goku would actually be training Raditz himself. Goku knows of the hyperbolic time chamber. But, if you guys remember, it's not officially ready yet, as it did take a lot of years for Popo to prepare it. But, Bulma would obviously help them out and give them whatever they need for it to give them enough food and supplies. Now, they would go in there, and Raditz, remember, would only be able to last so long. He would not be able to last the full year, as he immensely couldn't do it. But he almost made it, about 10 months. So, after the 10 months was up, they would leave, and Raditz apologized, saying, I'm sorry, but that's just so strong. And Goku said, don't worry about it. When I first went in there my first time, I couldn't even make it a month. So for your first time, it's amazing how well you did. Now, Raditz had torn armor, and Raditz has changed a lot. He's not dangerous and crazy anymore. He's understanding and calm. He is very worried about Frieza, and he's very worried about Vegeta and Nappa. But Frieza's his main concern about how strong he is. But after with training with Goku, and Goku showed him all of his Super Saiyan forms, he showed him his abilities, Raditz knows that he can easily squash Frieza like a plant, like a bug, no problem. His brother's the legendary Super Saiyan, and there's different states of that power? That, that, that greatly increases his strength? Frieza has no chance against Goku. Now during this time, the Z Fighters have also been training at King Kai's. As you guys remember, Kami can teleport there. Now, they would obviously just fly and get there really quickly, and they would get there no problem and train more, and when the time comes, they'll come back. So they have been training at Kami's, and remember, during the meantime, as they were done, now the Saiyans have arrived. Now, once Vegeta and Nappa arrived, Goku would actually kind of stay out of the fight, which is surprising. But he told Raditz, if you need help, I'll jump in, but I understand that you want to fight solo, but do not kill Vegeta. That Nappa guy, try and see if maybe he can be a good guy too. They'll really be really helpful with Frieza. Now, obviously, Goku does not want anybody killing Vegeta, especially because he knows Vegeta is a good guy. And maybe this Nappa guy can be saved too. So, we are all going to find out. So now, during this time, Vegeta and them would do their boasting, would talk about it. If you guys remember too, their son Gohan. Now, Goku would bring Gohan along. Gohan here is actually stronger than the original. Only being five years old, which is amazing, Goku would still have Piccolo train him for the remainder of that year. And he would become friends with Piccolo. But now Goku would actually talk to Piccolo and tell him about Gohan's amazing potential and to push his limits harder than before. And Goku knows that Piccolo is a good teacher. It's what made Gohan into a great warrior. But Goku wanted to focus on Raditz first as he knows that Raditz needs to push his limits and he needs to do the right thing. He owes it to Raditz for taking his life. Even though Goku died with him too. But we all get that. Now... Raditz here, the official power levels for everybody, Goku, is too high to count. Vegeta and Nappa are the exact same strength as the original, being 18,000, with Nappa being around four to 5,000 as the original. Now, Piccolo here is actually stronger than the original, having a power level of, I would probably say, around seven to 8,000. Now, with Gohan actually having a stronger teacher, being pushed harder, said by Goku, and also being given tips by Piccolo, with how Gohan's anger works and everything else, Gohan is a more well-rounded fighter. So Gohan here, instead of having a power level of around 1,000, nearly 2,000, he would have a power level of around four to 5,000. Krillin, Yamcha, Tien, they're all stronger together. They're all about 3,000 stronger, so it'll definitely bump them up to around the four to 5,000, potentially 6,000s range. They're a little bit stronger than Gohan, around the same, but they're near the strength of Piccolo as well, so they're all a lot stronger. Now, Raditz is the golden champ here. Raditz being training with Goku, getting beatings all the time with the sensu beatings and everything else. Raditz here is very, very, very strong. Now, Goku has been trying to teach Raditz Super Saiyan, but Raditz is not ready yet. His body is not ready to handle the Super Saiyan form yet, but he's getting close, but not yet. Raditz here has a power level of 15,000. So, the fighting would begin. Now... Nappa would very quickly have a very hard time fighting all these Z-Fighters off. Piccolo could take him down easily by himself, as you guys remember. So Nappa would get beaten down pretty embarrassingly, leaving Vegeta to have to do all the dirty work here. Now, Raditz would want to fight Vegeta head on. The two would clash back and forth, and Raditz does a pretty well job against Vegeta, 
but he cannot take him down. So Goku would offer to take over his turn and to help take down Vegeta. Now, the thing with Nappa. Now, while Raditz was fighting Vegeta, Goku went over to Nappa and tried to consult with him, saying, Look, just give up. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Nappa was so beaten up that he couldn't really do anything. He lost, and he went unconscious. But Goku does respect his pride as a Saiyan to try to get back up and keep fighting. And they're going to need that against Frieza. Now, Raditz and Vegeta was a tough battle, but Vegeta would very much overcome Raditz here. Now, once when Raditz was overcome, Vegeta would then knock him to the ground and point to Goku, saying, You're next, low class. Now, Goku would then smile. His blood, even though Vegeta is far weaker than he remembers him and all the way those years later, his blood still boils a little bit at the thought of fighting Vegeta. He gets goosebumps every time, even if Vegeta's weaker. Goku here, he actually wants to push Vegeta to high limits. As you know here, most of the Z fighters are perfectly fine. They all ganged up on Nappa, and Nappa had no chance. Goku actually has some Sensu Beans here. Now, he would obviously give a Sensu Bean to Raditz, and just to give one ready for Nappa, but they want to leave Nappa injured so he doesn't get up and start fighting again, but he wants to do something with Vegeta. Something interesting here. What he would do is he would begin fighting Vegeta and he would easily slap him around in base form having no problem at all. He would actually gravely injure Vegeta here. Now Vegeta was furious how easily the Saiyan was swatting him like a fly and he wasn't even sweating. How is this possible? But now Goku would offer a Sensu Bean. Goku said to Vegeta, if you eat this Sensu Bean, you'll become even stronger than before. Why would Vegeta eat that? He doesn't need a bean to help him. And Goku states, eat one Vegeta trust me now Vegeta would think about it and he would think why would you help me in battle this doesn't make any sense and, and Goku states trust me just eat the sensu bean and you'll become stronger so Vegeta does just that and Vegeta was shocked to see that all of his injuries and everything healed completely his energy was restored stamina was back he was shocked how was this possible but now Vegeta here has had a nice big Zenkai boost because of this as his power level was originally 18,000, he was bumped up to 30,000, which is a pretty big boost. And remember before, his power level was around 24,000. I want to make it a little bit higher because he's fighting a much stronger Goku being beaten pretty badly. So it's about 30,000. Now he thinks he can actually take on Goku. But Goku again would easily slap him around, but Goku was having a little bit of fun. Now Vegeta here would get furious and look up and throw a fake moon. Now, this would cause Vegeta to transform into a great ape, boosting his power level from 30,000 to 300,000. Now, Goku would, of course, easily beat Vegeta down, but he wants Vegeta to save his tail. So, he would just keep on beating down Vegeta easily and taking him down, no problem. So, where Vegeta was forced to go back to base form and the moon disappeared. Now, Vegeta was so beaten to the point to where there was nothing that he could do and he would fall unconscious. A couple weeks would pass, Nappa and Vegeta do wake up. Now, Nappa would actually wake up first. And, of course, he was kind of, you know, angry and looking around. He was at Capsule Corp. Now, Bulma would actually befriend Nappa and help him out. Now, of course, with her big mouth, she would shut him up very quickly, as we all know how Bulma works. Now, Nappa does remember that Bulma's a lot like how their Saiyans are, the female Saiyans were. And he respects that about these earthly females. And he wonders, why did they save him? That's not right. Goku states, look, we're going to need all the help we can get to take down Frieza. After we beat Frieza, if you want to go out on your own, but don't do no evil, I understand. Now, Nappa would swallow his pride and degree, as he can't beat Goku. Even his Prince Vegeta lost against this version of Goku like nothing. So what's he going to do? Now, Vegeta was the most stubborn here, but Bulma very quickly, you can see the dynamic right there between the two as they would have their thing back and forth. Goku would basically tell them straight up, look, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to happen. If you guys don't like it, try fighting me again, but this time I will not spare your life. They understand. But now, a couple more weeks pass by, the fighters were nursed back to health and then added it in to a couple more months. A couple more months would pass. Now, during this time, Nap and Vegeta kind of calmed down a little bit, but Frieza is their biggest concern. Goku's actually going to go handle that right now. And Goku states, don't worry, I'll have Frieza handled no problem. 
Now, Vegeta and Nappa and Raditz, they all want to go take down Frieza themselves and watch him burn. So, Goku does just that. Goku takes Nappa, Vegeta, and Raditz with him to go fight Frieza. Now, power levels here after Zenkai doing some training with Goku. Nappa has a power level of around 12 to 15,000. Vegeta, around 30,000. He's probably about uh, we give him about 35 to 40,000, and Raditz is probably around 20 to 25,000, which is very respectable. Now, of course, Frieza's subordinates has no chance against, especially Raditz, and especially Vegeta, who would take pride in taking Zarbon and them down, and Dodoria. Now, before Frieza could even call the Ginyu Force, Goku would be there. And, of course, Goku would save a lot more Namekians here, and he would start handling Frieza himself. Now, before they go handle Frieza, he would go meet Elder Guru. Now, Goku actually thinks to himself, saying, Well, this guy is really cool, and he can unlock your power. Goku doesn't need the power. He doesn't feel like he can help him. But Elder Guru does state that you have a, do have a lot of potential, but a lot of it's already unlocked. But there's plenty more within you, young Saiyan. But you're not as young as you appear, don't you? Your, your mind is older than even all of us. What he means by that is Goku's way older in his head than he is his body. Which would make sense. Goku here is technically probably in his 70s. In his brain, if you think about it. Because Goku was in his early 50s. Now this is about 20-25 years later. So he's in his 70s now. But now Goku would say, look, I know these guys are bad. But I know that they will do good. You're going to have to trust me. Now, Odo Guru would actually read his mind and learn about all the history, all the events that Goku's gone through, and he was amazed by it. He sees the good that Vegeta and them does. So, he unlocks Nappa, Vegeta, and Radix's power. Now, Elder Guru's power is kind of odd, so post in the comments down below what you think their power levels would be after the potential unlock. Now, Goku would then go handle Frieza. Now, of course, handling Frieza was pretty easy. Goku would tell him to go into his final form, and Frieza would do just that. Now, Goku knows that out of respect for Frieza, because this was his greatest fight at that time, he's going to showcase his full power as Frieza does the same. Goku does go Super Saiyan 4 and terrifies Frieza. Frieza says that that's a Super Saiyan. It's a Super Saiyan. How is that possible? They're only a myth. Goku would say, oh, I'm more than a Super Saiyan. I'm a Super Saiyan 4. This is the fourth transformation of a Super Saiyan, kind of like your form. Now, Frieza would have no chance here against Goku. Even after he tried everything in the book, Goku would easily defeat Frieza. Now, Goku would then charge up a full power attack and badly damage Frieza. Now, Goku, out of respect for his friends, Nappa, Vegeta, and Raditz, would all smirk at Frieza and charge up their own powerful attacks. Goku would stand back as they hit Frieza full power and kill him. So, Goku gave the kill to Nappa, Vegeta, and Raditz as they were a massive weight was lifted off to their shoulders. They, by their hand, even though Goku helped, killed Frieza. And they are more than happy about this. They would actually all thank Goku for this, and Goku states, Look, Frieza's gone and your strings are cut. You guys can come live on Earth, live a peaceful life, and do good. And, and Goku would look at them and say, Look, I know you guys... You have the fiery will of a Saiyan, and I can respect that. We can fight any time you want. That's fine. But I know that you guys are going to do great. You can live on the planet peacefully, and you can live your lives, and everything will be better that way. You don't have to run and hide across the universe. Now, Vegeta and Nappa would definitely think about it. Raditz is already sold, because he's already been living there. But they would go back to Earth as where else are they going to go? Now... Nappa and Vegeta would live at the Capsule Corp, and Vegeta would very quickly, he would start liking Bulma. Now, Nappa obviously is older Saiyan, he doesn't really date nobody, why would he need to? Now, but Nappa's definitely calmed down a lot. He's still a little bit arrogant, but he's actually a cool guy. Vegeta's still more prideful than anybody else. Raditz has definitely settled down way more. And Raditz would actually go with Launch, which is a really mixed couple. They've definitely been doing that a lot between them. So Raditz is with Launch, and they would start dating each other. And Goku was, of course, with Chi-Chi, and he was training his son Gohan. Now, there is one problem that Goku remembers. Oh, crap. What about the heart virus? He got it before. He's going to get it again soon. But he doesn't panic too bad, as he thinks, well, with the Namekian Dragon Balls, maybe I can get that problem solved. And I'll be okay. 
hopefully. And Goku states, and you know what, if I die from it, which is okay, I'll just have them bring me back with the Namekian Dragon Balls, which King Kai can help them do that, no problem. Which, I don't know why they didn't do that in the original, by the way. So everything was peaceful. As you guys remember, no androids, no cell, no nobody. It is calm. Very calm. Almost too calm. Now, if you guys remember, Frieza does have a brother. Now, this brother knows that he is far too weak to fight that likes a Goku that easily beat him in a single couple of blows. And King Cold thinks of that the same. So, they're actually going to begin training. And maybe that will be able to take down the Saiyan. We last kicked off with Frieza being absolutely obliterated by Goku, Vegeta, and Nappa, and Raditz. Now, of course, Goku did give them the chance to kill him on their own, which they respect him for that. Now, years would actually pass, and peace was actually restored on Earth. The only thing that Goku was a little bit worried about was that he knows that the heart virus is going to be coming, but he doesn't know when exactly, but he knows it's near the time when the androids appear. Remember, it's, it's been about 30 plus years since the androids for Goku, or even longer now, so he doesn't remember the exact day when it happened. But he's not worried about it, as he does have repercussions in case it does. Bulma, with the help of Goku, Bulma would actually figure out a way to study the heart virus that's already in Goku growing right now, and have a medicine already early that would actually help out and help Goku. So in this timeline, Goku wouldn't necessarily die, he would just have the medicine, but the medicine will keep him knocked out for longer than before in the original. Now as two to three years pass, life was very enjoyable. There was no androids, Goku knew the heart virus was coming, but he'll take it as he has the medicine and he'll be okay. And even if he dies, he's sure that maybe King Yemma will give him a solid and help him out, or, I mean, he's not truly upset and here he also remembers that if the earth does truly need him he can also use Bubba to bring it back for 24 hours to take down a major threat now he did just to be sure he wants to be sure that everybody is strong enough to defend earth if he's not here he does know of Majin Buu that is the main threat but he knows that with Vegeta Nappa and Raditz and the other Z fighters plus his son they can all do it so Goku actually has been training Gohan a lot more Gohan still does school, but with Goku spending more time with him and Chi-Chi not really Goku just telling Chi-Chi and explaining it better, Chi-Chi would actually understand and let Gohan basically do a lot more training than did in the original. Now, if you know how busted Gohan is with his potential, Gohan at this point, after the three years hitting up near the Android Saga, Gohan is way more powerful than the original. This version of Gohan is not as powerful as he was when he fought Cell, but he is very close to that. And Gohan is starting to learn to become a Super Saiyan, but not yet. He has tapped into it for a little bit, but he hasn't officially learned how to control it or nothing like that. But he's getting there, which is very impressive for his age. Now the main thing that he's actually working on is Vegeta. Vegeta and Raditz and Nappa. Now, Nappa and Raditz have been keeping up, but with Vegeta having more natural talent than both of them, he's already surpassed them. Now, Goku does ha and will. He already taught Raditz and Nappa how to turn Super Saiyan. Now, remember, Goku has known it for so long that he can easily teach them. Now, Goku was trying to teach Raditz and Nappa to tap into the next level. But this is proving pretty difficult, but Goku understands that with time, they'll, they'll learn it no problem. Now, Vegeta already learned Super Saiyan faster than even they did. Uh, he had more trouble, but he was able to figure it out. Now, this is actually Goku's main step that he wants to do. Now, it is true, though, that Vegeta needs his tail. So, if you remember... Goku, all the way back in the Saiyan Saga, did not destroy his tail. So luckily, Vegeta still has it today. Now, Goku would explain how the Super Saiyan 4 transformation works. He's already shown them all the Super Saiyan forms, but he knows that all you need is the Great Ape form in Super Saiyan. And he knows that Vegeta can actually control his Great Ape state very easily now, since it's not been so many years since he's done it, and he knows how to control it. So he can easily learn Super Saiyan 4. A lot more easier than losing control. And they just do that. Once when a full moon hit, Vegeta would then transform into a great ape and push his great ape body to the limit and get a golden hue on his body. 
Now, once when that happens, Vegeta can control the power and harness it, and he has become a Super Saiyan 4. He was ecstatic. He has finally, finally ascended to the next level. Now, of course, Nappa and Raditz do want to do this as well, but Goku knows that as of right now, they're not just ready yet. Because Nappa has not turned into a great ape in a very, very, very long time. He never needed to. Nor did Raditz as well. So Goku wants them to try to work on controlling the great ape form first and then being able to get Super Saiyan 4. And they understand that. But they also want to work hard for it and kind of build it up. So for right now, Vegeta, that's all that's needed right now. But Goku can't train three people at the same time. He has to focus. Remember, he's try mainly working on his son, but he's doing it for Vegeta as well because he knows that he will need Vegeta when the time comes, if anything happens. Because now that Vegeta knows it, Vegeta will definitely teach Nappa, and they'll teach Raditz how to do it, so he's passing it down. Now, during this time, King Cold and also Cooler have actually been training. They have been training for the past couple of months now to get stronger. And if you guys know, they are not a prodigy like how Frieza was. Now, Frieza was stated to be a natural prodigy among his species. That is why he's so powerful and very, very, very underrated when it comes to him training for a short period of time. So we all know that after cooling them trained for multiple months, you can even say a year, they are extremely powerful here. They're not as powerful as Frieza was, but they're very powerful. Now, Cooler and King Cold would arrive on Earth. All the Z Fighters would show up and see what's going on. Now, the most dangerous one here is actually Cooler. Cooler is actually the more powerful one. King Cold was kind of lazy. While it is true he did train and get a little bit stronger, Cooler actually took it the most serious and pushed his body past its limits. Now, once when all this is said and done, King Cold would then showcase his fifth form. As you guys remember, King Cold is only in his second form, and he's nearly as strong as Frieza. So imagine if he went into a fourth or fifth form. He is very powerful. I would say that he is near the power of Cell. Now, luckily, with Raditz, Nappa, and not to mention all the other Z Fighters who have been training very hard, not to mention, too, Gohan here, at this point, has learned to be able to tap into Super Saiyan, but it's still not a full, like, mastery of it at all. They would all tag up and go attack King Cold, who definitely, definitely Raditz and Nappa would give him the most trouble. Because those guys are not weak by any means necessary, they are in the Cell Soccer levels of power, especially in Super Saiyan here. Now Goku, and, now, Goku would actually get a little bit serious, and he knows that this version of Cooler is very powerful. He looks a lot like Frieza, but it's not. Now Vegeta, now Vegeta will kind of say who he is, saying that this is Cooler, he's very dangerous, and his power level is insane. Now Cooler would then showcase his, his four form, as he would use the full power in that state. Now Goku and Cooler would actually fight both in base form, and Goku is still stronger than Cooler, but Cooler was able to keep up with Goku a little bit. Now once when Goku backs off, Vegeta wants to have a turn at him, right away. Now, Goku does kind of think it kind of sucks. He's been having a little bit of fun fighting, but he'll let Vegeta fight. And Cooler actually does want to fight Vegeta, as he does kind of want to see what else the Saiyan wants to do. But he does want to fight Goku for the main one. So, that's exactly what they do. Now, Vegeta and Cooler would actually be a way closer battle here. With Vegeta actually having to go Super Saiyan to actually keep up with 4th form Cooler. Now, Cooler would then come in the Saiyan, and then he would go into his 5th form. Now, he would actually point a finger, saying, now I'm ready to fight you. Now, Goku was actually kind of surprised by, there's a fifth transformation. Not to mention, too, how powerful he is. Frieza's never done that before. Now, Vegeta would then smirk and showcase Super Saiyan 4. Now, these two would begin their battle here. Now, Cooler, at this point in time, would still be stronger than Vegeta. But Vegeta was able to put up a pretty decent fight. Vegeta in Super Saiyan 4 is easily higher than Buu Saga levels here. Now, not to mention the fact that Cooler has been training for nearly a year. He does have good potential, but not like Frieza. He has something under his sleeve. Now, Vegeta would end up losing the fight because Cooler in his fifth form has no stamina drawbacks or nothing. 
and he is more superior to Vegeta right now. So, Vegeta would then lose his form, and Cooler would break his arm and kick him to the side. Now, this is when he points a finger at Goku, but Cooler was, had actually some battle damage on him, and they would begin their battle. Now, all Goku truly needs is Goku just needs Super Saiyan 3. He wants to push himself a little bit and see what Cooler has. Now, Goku has been training Super Saiyan 3. It still does drain a pretty good amount of energy, but not nearly as much as it used to in the original. Not to mention now that Goku's a full-fledged adult and he can hold the form a lot better. So the two would begin their battle, and Goku and Cooler would be pretty evenly matched here. Or you think. Goku would actually be overpowering Cooler as he would showcase more of his full potential here, as you guys remember how powerful this version of Goku is. Now Cooler at this time would end up smirking and showcasing that I have more to show, and Goku would smirk as well, saying I know you've been hiding something, so why don't we throw all our cards out on the table, you show your power and I will show mine. And Cooler does just that. Cooler would then grow a little bit more in size, and he would be in his golden fifth form. He made it golden because that was the same color that Goku had and the other Saiyans had when they did kill Frieza. I'm just kidding, that didn't happen. But Cooler wanted to make it golden because of the Super Saiyan and how it's a gold color. And it's also an excuse as it's golden cooler, so who doesn't want to do that? Now Cooler would then fly in and begin attacking Goku here. Now Goku would showcase Super Saiyan 4 bursting into it as the two would begin their battle. Now, cutting back to the Z Fighters, Raditz and Nappa were both panning and had some battle damage, same with King Cold. All the Z Fighters were badly injured and tired after having an intense battle. They're all of them versus King Cold at the same time, they're pretty much an even fight. Now, Nappa would look at Raditz and he would think, well, what else are we going to do? There's not much more that we can truly do against this guy. And then they would look at Gohan and they would think, well, maybe we can give our energy to each other and we can overpower him that way. Now they all think about it and they think, alright, sure. Now all of them would give their energy to Raditz and Raditz would then get a massive buff in power, nearly higher than full strength, and he would be able to then beat down on King Cold, having a nearly impossible fight. And King Cold would then start begging for mercy, telling him, saying, no, look, we can work with this if you let me go. But Raditz is not very nice. Raditz would then aim and use every ounce of power that he has and completely kill King Cold. There was nothing left of the king of the universe. Nothing left at all. His empire was gone. He was gone. All that's left was Cooler. The Z Fighters had no energy left as they fall to the ground watching Goku fight Cooler. As Vegeta was pissed off that, that this form was still not able to beat Cooler, but he at least he was able to give it full power and see what he can do. And now they know that Goku will be able to handle this. Now Goku at this point is still holding back a tremendous amount of power here, not even trying. But he wants to see how powerful Cooler truly is, and Cooler's definitely showing him that he is very powerful. Now, after this fight is done, Goku would then showcase his full power for the first time. Now, this would make far off in the galaxy, this would make a cat kind of sniffle a little bit and twitch in his sleep. His name was Lord Beerus, as even Whis would be drinking tea, as he would stop and sense that power, and he was like, oh my, what is that? As the whole Universe 7 shook. But now then Goku would then charge a Kamehameha and state, I, I would offer you to leave, but there is no justice with your kind. And he would completely obliterate Cooler, making sure that there was no trace of him left, and he was gone, back to the afterlife. Now Goku would obviously help everybody up, they would all heal their injuries, and then Goku was hit with the heart virus. Now Goku would then collapse as he was starting to sweat badly and he knew that it was happening. He needs some medicine now. So the weeks would pass on and Goku was unconscious, slowly healing up and slowly trying to get better. Now taking the events right after King Code and Cooler, Goku and his friends have all enjoyed time of peace. Now, as you guys know, Raditz and Nappa, they do want to know Super Saiyan 4 next. Now, with some training, Goku would actually help his brother Raditz, and Nappa included, learn how to go into Super Saiyan 4. Now, this is over the course of the next couple of years that this would take to happen. And then, now that they're all set up to go, Goku would then focus on his son, Gohan. He knows how much potential that his son has, and he knows that his son could be the strongest out of all of them. Now, of course, Goku still keeps his training up, and Goku was actually kind of excited to go fight Majin Buu again. 
Now, as Goku knows how that one day it will turn into Oob, which he still does kind of want that wish. But he does need to be careful because of the Dragon Balls. As if they use and kind of, you know, overuse the Earth's Dragon Balls, then the Shadow Dragons might appear. But Goku at this point knows that he probably can take the Omega Shenron down, but it's still the same concept. He doesn't want that to happen because then the Earth might be doomed to explode as well. And that's just something that he doesn't feel like going all the way through again. Now, of course, he still does train Gohan, and him and his son train together, for father and son time. Now, Gohan still does do his studies, all that happens the exact same. Since there is no androids and no cell, seven years have passed. Now, Goten was actually born a little bit earlier, so you can just say that he's about two years older. So instead of him being about, you know, like seven to eight, you, you could just even it out to about ten years old. And you can say that Trunks is about eleven as well, eleven to twelve. Now, obviously, Vegeta's with Bulma, and Raditz has his own child as well, and she's a fighter as well. Nappa doesn't really have anybody. Uh, he doesn't really see it as dating. He doesn't feel like doing any of that, which is fine. And he's older anyway. Uh, Nappa, at this point, was probably in his, in his late 40s, potentially 50s. So he's potentially in his 60s at this point, so he doesn't really care about any of that stuff. Now, Goku knows that Bobbity will be showing up very shortly, and he does know that Boo can become good. He knows that there is the good fat Boo, not to mention there is good Oob. But he thinks that they would have to use the Namekian Dragon Balls to maybe do that, but that's for a story later on. Now, Goku would be ready when Bobbity shows up. They all show up to the tournament. Goku keeps this knowledge to himself. Now, the Supreme Kai still does show up. Now, once the Supreme Kai does show up, Goku would still meet him. And Goku already knows everything about him, he knows about the Elder Kai and everything else. Which Supreme Kai was pretty surprised, how does Goku know all about him? That doesn't make any sense at all. But Goku would actually tell him, well, being honest with you, and he would explain about how he lived his whole life before and now he's living it through again. He doesn't know how or why, but he knows a lot about the Kais and everything else, and how he knows that you guys are good, and he's here to help you guys out against Majin Buu. Now, Supreme Kai would think, well, if that's the case, then we do need help with him. And Goku states, but there is one thing that I do want in return. Is I do want my son Gohan to be trained by you guys. Which the Supreme Kai thought, well, it was an odd request. But Goku states that my son has amazing potential. And where I came from in my time, he became the strongest out of all of us training under you guys. And I know that he can do it again, because he's even stronger than he was before. So the Supreme Kai would agree, and Bobby would still show up, and we would still have our tournament here. Vegeta obviously wants to fight Goku. Now, Vegeta still does have a grudge against Goku here. Even though Vegeta has Super Saiyan 4, at this point, probably even like Super Saiyan 2 at this point, but he doesn't really need it. Super Saiyan 4 is the pinnacle, that's all he needs. He's still mad that he could never beat Goku in a fight. I mean, it infuriates him. Now, Goku's tried his best to become friends with him and maybe try to snuff out the evil in his heart, but I think you all know what's going to be happening very shortly here. Now, going into the Majin Saga, we do have the two guys who would show up. I think his name's Yabu, whatever it's called, or Beto. And they would still show up, and they would still try and take the energy. Now, Goku, at this point, actually remembers where Babidi's place is, so he doesn't necessarily need the energy. They would quickly get murdered, and very quickly, Goku would just follow them with Supreme Kai, Vegeta, Gohan, Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta. So they go with the whole team, fly over there to Bobby's ship, go inside, and most of the events would happen the exact same with them easily handling all the any threat that's in their way. Now Goku with Yatcon, it would be faster because he has more energy, he can just burst and he's fine. Now going into Deborah now. Now Gohan would actually go fight Deborah. And if you guys remember here, this version of Gohan is still in, by the way, he's still in high school, he still meets Fidel, and all that happens the same. But this version of, of Gohan is insanity. And here's why. Everybody knows how powerful Gohan is. Now, Gohan at this point already has Super Saiyan 2, and I think you guys don't know what I'm going to be saying next. He does have Super Saiyan 4. As you guys remember, Goku never removed his tail. He knows that he might help his son Gohan become a Super Saiyan 4. Now... Gohan can become Super Saiyan 4, and he can control it just fine. He is an adult now. He can do it. Uh, he's insanely powerful. In his Super Saiyan 4 state, Gohan, I would say, is near, near the level of probably, 
I would probably say probably Buhan, potentially, uh, is when Super Buu was absorbed. It's easily for Gohan, and there's no fighting back for that one, especially with his potential. He's been trained way more in the original. And not to mention with Super Saiyan 4, yeah. So that's nerfing Gohan a little bit. Now, Goku's far superior than that. Now, Deborah has no chance against his version of Gohan. Even in Super Saiyan 2, he could easily beat him, which he does, though. And Bobby's a little bit worried, and he's like, okay, well, now I'm in a bit of a problem. So, he has an idea. What are the two darkest souls that he can try and take over? Well, it would be Nappa and Vegeta. Now, he would try to attack Raditz, but Raditz would actually be able to beat it. Now, Raditz has changed, Raditz changed his life. He's never held a grudge against Goku. He's he's a happy married man. He's, he has changed a lot. He's still a Saiyan, but he's not evil or malice anymore. Now, he did take over, and Raditz obviously was able to beat it. He overpowered it, bursting into Super Saiyan 4. Now, Nappa and Vegeta both go Super Saiyan 4. And even though Nappa is, quote-unquote, a good guy, he I'm just going to say in this what-if that just because he's a little bit more evil... Um, just in general, than probably Vegeta would be. He is able to be taken over. And Vegeta allows himself to be taken over because he wants to fight Goku. So you now have two Super Saiyan 4s with the M signal on their head, and which is terrifying. Now, Babidi was beyond thrilled. These Super Saiyan 4s were even stronger than the original Majin Buu that he remembers. Now, he thinks that if Majin Buu can absorb these two beings, they he will become unbeatable. So Babidi does take that in mind. And Vegeta obviously points his finger saying, I want to fight you. And Nappa would even want to fight Raditz. Because Nappa might even hold a grudge against him for beating him all those years ago. So, Goku would look at Raditz and say, I want you to handle Nappa and I'll handle Vegeta. Now, they would go off go their own ways. And this will be the famous battle we all know. Now, obviously, Vegeta was a lot stronger than he originally was as a Super Saiyan 4. Because of the magic boost your body to its limit. But at the same time... Vegeta has no chance against Goku. It's not happening. Goku is way too powerful, but Goku would maybe try and see if he can give him a fight a little bit, as Goku does want Majin Buu to come out, which is, you know, realistically, because he wants to see if he can get Oob to be reincarnated, because he knows that how powerful Oob can become, but first is to get Fat Buu first. So that's exactly what he does, is he suppresses himself and fights Vegeta head-on for the entire fight. Now, of course... Raditz would also be on his own, fighting Nappa, and they would actually be pretty even in their battle. Their battle would be very similar to Goku versus Vegeta. They would be completely even, and it would be a very intense battle. Now, Goku here would obviously beat down on Vegeta, and Goku would tell him, saying, Look, Vegeta, I could have ended this fight anytime I wanted to. You cannot beat what I am. Now, Vegeta was furious. Now, this is when Majin Buu comes out. Now, once when Fat Buu comes out, there is uh, he would try to fight Gohan, but Gohan would actually be able to handle him. Until Boo would absorb him. Now, Gohan would be going into his Super Saiyan 4, and he would easily beat around Fat Boo, beating him up, until Bobbity tells him what to do and what they planned. So that's exactly what happens. Fat Boo, Gohan cuts a piece of him off, and Fat Boo ends up absorbing Gohan. Now, once when Gohan was absorbed, he would, I'm gonna just say that he looks like Boo Han pretty much. Goku would sense a massive surge of power erupt. And it was because Boo absorbed Gohan here. Now, I guess you can call it Boo Han would show up and go see Raditz and Nappa. Now, Raditz and Nappa were both exhausted from their battle. And now, Bobbity has told Boo that, hey, I need you guys to be able to absorb both of them and get even more stronger to fight that main Saiyan. And they don't, and obviously, both of them would try to fight, but Boo would just end up absorbing them as well. And now this is a problem, because Goku would stop Vegeta and say, wait, he just got even stronger, and he doesn't sense Gohan, Raditz, or Nappa's energy anymore. Now Vegeta doesn't care, but Goku would, would give him a speech and tell him, saying, look, Majin Buu, is no th Majin Buu is a danger now. He's absorbing all of our friends. Can you just put your pride aside for one time, and we can actually work on beating him? Now Vegeta would then smirk and say, fine, whatever you want to do. Now Goku would give Vegeta a sensu bean. Goku didn't need one. And now that is when Buhan arrived. We're still going to say Buhan. Now, once when Buu arrived, he had tremendous power. 
obviously at this point he is way stronger than he was in the original I mean, even Gohan himself in Super Saiyan 4 was way stronger than Buhan. So adding in the fact that he absorbed Gohan and Raditz and Nappa in Super Saiyan 4, and they're all kind of closest to Gohan, that just goes to show how powerful this version of Boo is. He is easily stronger than Vegito. He's very OP. Now during this time, Vegeta would then help Goku try and fight, but Vegeta would end up trying to get absorbed. Goku would try to grab him, but it was too late. Now Goku has a problem. Goku knows that he has to get absorbed and go into his body so he can free all of them. And then he can free Fat Boo as well. And he knows that that will bring out Kid Boo, but he knows that he can easily beat Kid Boo no problem. I mean, even in his base form, he can easily beat him. So Goku would fight Buhan. We're, we're just going to keep on calling him Buhan just for the what if scenario, just because it, you know, it makes sense to call him that. And I don't, I don't feel like sitting here calling him Vegeta Han or whatever you want to call him, Rada. You know, nap on. But so with Buhan would begin fighting, he's way more cocky and he has tremendous power here. Their fight would be legendary as they would trade blows back and forth. Goku would would actually have a pretty fun time fighting him as he's way stronger than Vegito currently. That was in Dragon Ball Z. It's a pretty fun battle for Goku. But Goku was far superior and not to mention here. Goku is still holding back, as he does want to keep on beating down on Boo, so Boo can absorb him, and he can go in there and free him. Now, Goku knows that he can do the key shield around his body, and it will protect him. Very similar to what Vegito did, but Goku's not held on by magic, so. Now, Buhan would still fly in, and continue to attack Goku, but not much of a challenge for Goku here. Goku would kind of make fun of him and taunt him like how Vegito did. So if you want to imagine a fight between them, just imagine Vegito versus Buhan, and that's pretty much the fight between Goku and this version of Boo. Now, Boo does have a lot of abilities now and a lot of moves that he can use, but Goku would still easily be able to overpower them. Now, Buhan would be furious as he would charge a full power final flash, which is what Vegeta has, and this move is dangerous. It's a very powerful technique and it can skyrocket your power level. Now, Goku at this point would then fire his own Kamehameha times 10 and would easily overpower the final flash and nearly kill Boo, leaving him in pieces. Now, Goku does form a key shield around himself as Boo would then laugh and absorb Goku. He was beyond happy that he was able to absorb him, you know, taunting him like Majin Boo, Big Bad Boo, and Goku would be in his body and he would have the fun adventure traveling all throughout his body to find the egg sacs. Now, once when you find the, the sacks where all the guys are, uh, he sees Gohan, Vegeta, Nappa, Raditz, and all the other guys. He also sees Fat Boo. And he knows that, okay, this is what we're going to do here, and this is how we're able to free him. So, Goku would then start cutting off all the eggs very quickly and freeing them and even Fat Boo. Now, Majin Buu would start screaming as he would start transforming into Kid Buu. Goku would, Goku would throw everybody out and free everybody. Now, once when that happens, he would watch as Kid Buu was formed. Now, Goku would smirk as he was kind of excited to fight him again. He would actually talk to King Kai and talk to the Namekians to get the Dragon Balls ready, as he does have a wish, and he tells him to just trust him. King Kai would be kind of suspicious, but he understands. Goku would begin his fight with Kid Buu, and he would have a really fun time. And he would actually tell Kid Buu, saying, I remember when I, remember when I fought you the first time, how you were my strongest enemy. I've never met somebody like you, but I know that you will be reborn as somebody good one day. And that's exactly what Goku does. As Goku would then charge a full power Kamehameha, Kid Buu has no chance against the version of Goku here. Goku would then make sure to tell King Kai to get the Dragon Balls ready. He would fire a full power blast and completely incinerate Kid Buu. Now the Namekians would make the wish that, it, that, that Kid Buu would be reincarnated as a good person one day. And it, Dragon would glow and say, okay. And he would then disappear, flying off. Now, Goku was content as he knows that he will find Oob one day in a couple more years. And he will be able to help him grow and become an amazing fighter when Goku's not going to be around. Now, Goku thinks, okay, so we're not going to be using the Dragon Balls anymore. We've only, we've only used the Earth Dragon Balls maybe once or twice. So there shouldn't be any evil within them, and even if they do come out, I can handle them no issue. Now Goku thinks to himself, now there's really no other threat to really worry about, other than maybe, you know, just making sure that everything's alright, in the universe, and helping out, 
And he thinks that, well, there's finally peace. Now, as we all know, a year or two passes. And far off into another planet, a certain cat was sleeping. And it was Lord Beerus. He awakens from his slumber, as he did have a dream about a Super Saiyan God. And how it was a true fighter that can give him the fight that he always wanted, a true rival. He would tell Whis all about it, and Whis would then showcase all the Saiyans and how powerful they'd become. They've even got a new form, and everything else. Now Goku states, what? A Saiyan defeated Frieza? Hmm, now they must be pretty powerful then. And we states, yes, my lord. He also killed Majin Buu and Frieza's brother and father as well. Now, Beerus was very interested in the Saiyan. He wants to meet him. And he would do just that. Now, Goku would not be on King Kai's planet. He would actually be with his friends and family, enjoying Bulma's, I guess, 38th birthday party. And Bulma would have it on her yacht slash ship. And they would all have a good time. But then Goku got a little bit serious as he senses something coming. As then Beerus would arrive. And Beerus would explain who he is, and that he is the god of destruction, and he's looking for a Super Saiyan god. Now Beerus walked- now Vegeta was absolutely terrified. Vegeta would tell Goku who Beerus is, and what he is, and that he's the most dangerous being ever. He's even more terrifying than Frieza, and more terrifying than Boo. Now Goku can sense the raw pressure that he is getting from Beerus. He's never felt anything like this before. But this got his blood pumping. He was really excited. If he was able to fight this version, this got his blood pumping. Now Beerus was very interested in Goku. He would walk around him, kind of expect inspecting him, seeing what he looks like. And he was like, so you're the one that defeated Frieza. Which Goku would say, yes I did. And he would say, well, I want to fight you. And I want to see how powerful you are. Now Goku knows that he's never met somebody like Beerus before. Just his atmosphere and how he looks at him is different. So... He would showcase Super Saiyan 1, 2, 3, and his final form, which is Super Saiyan 4. Now, Beerus was very impressed. He's like, you are very, very powerful. I've not met a lot of beings that are as powerful as you are. Now, Goku, at this point, as the all want, have been wanting to know for so long, how strong is Goku here? How strong is he as a Super Saiyan 4 right now in basically Dragon Ball Super after getting a whole reborn well Goku at this point in terms of power he is probably as strong or stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Goku or Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta and the Tournament of Power and that's not far-fetching Goku in terms of he had a whole lifetime of training again so he is extremely powerful so, he's way more powerful than his God of Destruction, uh, than his Super Saiyan God self. So, he would begin his fight with Beerus and actually give him a pretty decent fight. But Beerus still wanted more, and he knows that this mortal doesn't even possess God Key. And he's this powerful? So imagine if he had it, he could be a real challenge. So, he doesn't care about the Super Saiyan God, he thinks that he must be a Super Saiyan God somehow, even though there's no God Key. Goku would actually lose. Goku would actually lose the battle because you guys know Beerus is too strong for this version of Goku. And Goku was actually happy that he lost. He's never met a match like this in so many years and he gave him everything that he had. Even trying to mix Tao Ken with Super Saiyan 4, pushing it to times 10, it was still not enough to beat Beerus. But Goku did get some few solid hits in and Beerus was way more than satisfied. Now Beerus would actually offer Goku that hey, if you want, you and Vegeta, you can come to my planet and you can train. And Goku says, what about my son and my other brother and them? And he's like, well, I'm only going to allow so many people on my planet. And he says, you know, and which Goku understands. And Goku says, it might be better to always have somebody here in case something happens and me and Vegeta are gone. Not to mention, Gohan at this point knows that Videl's pregnant, so he's not going to go. And would Nappa want to go? Yeah, but he doesn't really like this Beerus guy. He doesn't want to spend any more time with him as is. And he's going to keep on training on his own. He doesn't, he doesn't want second help. And Raditz would want to go, but at the same time, Launch would yell at him, telling him, no, you have to be a dad and do your thing. And he, he'll protect Earth while Goku's gone, and he'll get that training another time. So, during this time here, Goku and Vegeta would then go up to Beerus' planet. 
and they would both begin their grueling training. Now back on Earth, the Dragon Balls would be used once more to wish back Frieza. Now once when Frieza was brought back, they would explain everything that has happened. Even his brother was able to go into a golden state. Now Frieza states well, if my brother trained for a whole year and couldn't even beat them, then I have to train even harder. Not to mention, he was able to give Beerus a, a run for his money. That's I, I need to train like never before. So instead of Frieza in the original training for about three months to get to his golden state, this version of Frieza would train for maybe twice or ten times, you know, way more than that. Instead of three months, Frieza would then train for about a year plus, which is a long time for Frieza. Now Frieza at this point is way stronger than his original self here. Um, you could probably say that he's as strong. Now he has mastered his golden form. There's no fifth form, obviously, because cool as cooler's form. Now, would they want to wish his brother back? Frieza said, "Well, I would want my father back, but nah, I'm not worried about it. I want to be the only apex predator in the universe." So Frieza would then train his golden form, and all while Goku and Vegeta, they're still training on his planet, learning God Key and such like that. Vegeta actually gets rid of the Super Saiyan 4 state. He, he, he likes the form, but learning Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue, it does provide more power for him, and not to mention, he can actually you know use God Key in the state, not Super Saiyan 4. But Goku sees it differently. Goku wonders if he can mix his God Key with his Super Saiyan 4 state, if that is possible. Now, we states that it is very well possible if you could do it with a Super Saiyan, you could mix it with the Super Saiyan 4. But maybe that's for something to happen later on, as Goku still needs to train for that. And Goku understands, and so the same exact events with the Resurrection F Saga happen the exact same. With Frieza showing up, all the Z Fighters fighting the Frieza's men, just the difference here is Nappa and Raditz, they would be fighting Frieza, and actually put up a pretty myth, you know, a pretty decent fight, but even against, I would even say, when Frieza goes into his final form, his fourth form, they can't beat him. Uh, he's way too powerful, especially training for that long. The only person who could maybe give Frieza a kind of myth battle is Gohan, because Gohan here has Super Saiyan 4 mixing with Mystic. Pushing his potential and limits to higher lengths. Now, Gohan would actually give Frieza, for form Frieza, a pretty decent battle, actually. Gohan's not a weakling. He never stopped training. He would actually push for form Frieza pretty well. Now, not enough to use Golden, of course, but they fought pretty much almost to a stalemate. Now, Frieza was excited that he was able to fight and, you know, have fun while he's waiting for Goku and Vegeta. Once when Goku and Vegeta arrive, Vegeta wants to fight Frieza first, but Frieza wants Goku first. They would begin their battle, and base form Goku obviously is, is actually stronger than four form Frieza, and it would be a pretty similar battle to the original. They would just kind of trade blows back and forth, but Goku obviously had the upper hand in their battle. Now Goku would state, you're hiding something, aren't you? And Frieza says, very well, I'll show you. Now Frieza would then showcase his golden state, and which is his golden Frieza form. Now, Goku would smirk and state, you look just like your brother when you did that. And your power level is insane. Like, you know what, if, if, if you were not such a bad guy, you'd have been a perfect sparring partner. Now, if you guys remember here, Goku would then go into Super Saiyan 4. And the two would begin their battle. Now, Goku at this point is actually a lot more powerful than Frieza. Not much of a chance that Frieza has against this version of Goku. Especially since he has, you know, God training now with Whis. Goku was already a whole unit before, but he's a unit now. So Frieza sadly does not have much of a chance against Goku. Goku would fight him for a little while and get his fun out of it. And then he would actually give it to Vegeta. Now Vegeta would tell him, saying, look, it's my turn. Let me have at him. Vegeta would showcase his Super Saiyan Blue form. And it would actually be a way better battle between the two. With Vegeta actually being about equal to Golden Frieza. But even if Golden Frieza started winning, Frieza forgot one thing. The fact that Vegeta is still holding back a little bit. Now, Frieza does have a tendency of being very, very goofy with how he operates. So, 
Vegeta here would just charge up a final flash. If you guys remember, his final flash boosts his energy exponentially, and it would hit Frieza full force. Now, Frieza was actually pretty badly damaged from that attack, and Vegeta would smirk and his guard would be dropped. And that's when one of Frieza's men would shoot a ray gun right through Vegeta's chest to make him fall over. Now, Frieza would then torture him for a little bit, but then Goku would get in the middle of the fight, and he would say, All right, Frieza, you can do that against Vegeta, but try doing that against me. Now, Frieza at this point had no energy, and Goku would give him a very similar beatdown to how Vegeta did against Frieza in the original movie. And Frieza would get absolutely dominated, because Goku was not holding back. Now, Goku would then charge up a full power Kamehameha times 10, and hit Frieza full force. Absolutely obliterating Frieza, and before he could blow up the planet. Vegeta was given a Sensu Bean, and Goku does command him that you did a really good job, Vegeta. Your power, I've never seen your power like that before. Now, Vegeta would just scoff and walk away. The Z Fighters were happy that it was all over with, and all the men were gone. They would clean up the mess. Beerus, the entire time, was eating his parfait, eating ice cream with strawberries, not caring. They would all meet Jacko, and Jacko was amazed to see how powerful all these beings are. He was beyond amazed. Now, the one that he was actually the most respecting about is actually Raditz. Now, he, Jacko would actually go up to Raditz and state, Well, I'm a part of the Galactic Patrol. And we take down major threats in the universe, and I think that you would be an amazing soldier to have on there if you ever down to do it. Now, launch would be, you know, the bad launch. She would actually want Raditz to do it because it sounds badass, but also because it earns very good money. And who doesn't look, what, what woman does not like money? Especially with Chi Chi and all them. So, Raditz would say, very well, it'd also give me a good chance to meet new people and fight other beings in the universe. So... If you guys want to see now, Raditz is now a part of the Galactic Patrol. He's going to be a beast in there. He's probably the most, one of the most powerful beings in there. Especially with Super Saiyan 4. So Raditz would then fly off with Jacko to go do his own mission. Goku was happy for him. And he knows that the Earth is safe, especially with Gohan and the others around. Now, once when that ends, Beerus was very impressed. Uh, he just wished that Frieza was more of a challenge, honestly, because Goku kind of beat him pretty easily. Goku would sigh about it and say, yeah, but you know what, maybe one day I will actually fight somebody, maybe that's really strong, other than you, Beerus. And Frieza would then laugh as usual, and they would obviously take their Earth food, and they would take Goku and Vegeta back to their planet to go do more training, as Vegeta really wants to. He wants to, to get more stronger, and he wants more training. Now... After all this is passed, after once when the Frieza arc is done, Koku and Vegeta would be doing the same exact training as before under, under the weights, training together. Now, Vegeta is not necessarily catching up to Goku, but he's, you know, he's able to be a lot more powerful than his original self. Now, Choppa would still show up, and you all know what's about to happen. Universe 7 versus Universe 6. The tournament still happens. All the people are the same. Akaba, Megeta, uh, Botamo, Hit, and all those other guys, and, you know, uh, Frost. Now, Beerus would then smirk, as he knows that they'll easily be able to win here. Now, most of the events happen the same. The team-up will realistically probably just be Goku, Vegeta, Gohan. Even, even though true that Gohan does have Videl there, but Videl would actually want him to go, and that she'll just be on the sidelines with him. And they would bring Nappa, and that's all they really need, realistically. <clears throat> they don't really need nothing else. So, most of the fight would happen the same, with Vegeta pretty much dominating the entire fight, all up until Hit. Now, it's true that Vegeta is actually way more powerful than the original. Hit can still use his time skip ability, and no one has ever seen it before, and he would be able to overpower Vegeta. Now, by the time that Vegeta does figure it out, his vital points have all been hit too much, so there's not much that he can do, and he would actually be defeated. Now, the next guy who would actually jump out is actually Gohan. Now, Gohan here has stated that he's been training even harder than before to help to try to keep up with his father, so he does showcase his mystic form. Not to mention, Hit is actually tired from fighting Vegeta. Now, Gohan here would actually get the win, as he saw how Hit fought. It would be a very grueling battle. It would not be easy. And both contestants would be knocked out. So technically it would be a tie. But technically Beerus won because he still has more men. And Beerus would not have the secret guy. Or nothing crazy like that. So pretty much they would be declared the winner. Beerus would wish for Champa's planet to be brought back. 
and all that would still happen the exact same. Now, would there still be the Goku Black arc? I would say no, just because, yes, it is true about the Zamasu thing, but th that all started because of Zamasu. It's because Zamasu saw how evil mortals were and stuff like that, but Goku wouldn't necessarily go see Zamasu because I'm just going to change in this what if that Goku doesn't go because he's not necessarily with them. So that whole timeline doesn't happen. And there's not necessarily anything crazy. And even if there was, the Earth wasn't destroyed because there's no androids. And, yeah, so the entire timeline is different. So it's impossible for Goku Black to really appear. And even if we did, we all know that Goku and Vegeta would win. They could just do fusion and stuff like that. Because, remember, Goku knows about the fusion dance. So that would all happen the exact same. Same with Vegeta as well. After the Universe 6 arc was finished, there will be no Goku Black arc. Now, as you guys remember, it's because there is no cutoff timelines or different timelines that Trunks did because he never went back in, back in the past. So, this means that Zamasu really wouldn't see anything wrong with the mortal stuff, and at this point, he would become an official Kai, and, he would, and no Goku Black would even happen. There's no such thing. So, since we are skipping over the Goku Black arc, what couple arcs are left? Well, we do have the Broly arc, as yes, Broly is still on planet Vampa, that's all the same. And the Moro arc would still happen, plus we also have the Tournament of Power. Now, would the Tournament of Power have actually happened? Because if you guys remember that Zeno in the Universe 6 arc, he actually loved the tournament, and Goku gave the idea of, hey, we should do another tournament like this sometime, and Zeno, that's pretty much what put the idea in his head. Well, since Goku here is a bit more mature, I'm just going to say for what it purposes that he does still state that, hey, you know, it will be great if we can do a bigger tournament like this because Goku never knew what Zeno was going to do with destroying the other universes here. And of course, Zeno would agree, and Goku does promise to play with him every now and again. So once when the Zenos leave, you might have a couple of those little side arcs, but they're really not that important in terms of Dragon Ball Super. They're just kind of just filler for the big stuff. Now, cutting right into the Tournament of Power, of course, the Grand Priest would stay, and we would obviously have the Gotham Destruction meetup, and they would be pretty mad at Goku because he's the reason why they're kind of having this situation right here. So Goku's kind of seen as, like, the enemy. And Universe 7 is one of the lowest-ranking universes. So all that would happen the exact same, all the way leading up until after the Grand Priest tells them the rules and how long until they can get their members. Now, if you remember, one universe can have up to 10 members. Well, you would obviously have Goku, Gohan, Raditz, Vegeta, Nappa, Krillin, Tien, Piccolo. Now, there is two members left out. Now, would Goku go get Frieza? Well, there's not really that many other people to pick from that's really strong. So, Goku, I think, would actually go down and go get Frieza, even though he's a bad guy. Now, you have nine people. Well, what else is he going to do now? Because, you know, there's not really many other people that he can think of. But, I'm just going to say for filler, you can also have Master Roshi go in there because he's the OG. So, Master Roshi joins in as he even says that he's been training and he's been ready to go. So, now you have 10 people total. So, they're not kept, kept down by a couple people. They're a full team. And their team is very powerful. You have Super Saiyan 4s and Golden Frieza, Super Saiyan Blues. So, they are very, very powerful. So now, going into the Tournament of Power, Goku would first have his little exhibition match against Topo, and Goku at this point, he's very, he's very powerful. He's thousands of, t way more stronger than his original self. So at this point, Goku, I, I would even say in Super Saiyan, can probably take on Topo pretty well, maybe Super Saiyan 2, and he can pretty much beat him in the fight. And the gods will be shocked that this is not even his full power. Beerus is very confident, by the way, because he knows how powerful Goku is. Vegeta's very powerful. All the other Saiyans are powerful. And even though he despises Frieza, Frieza's very powerful in his own right. Plus, Frieza's been training for those couple of years, so he has mastered his golden form even more, perfecting it, being even stronger. Now, Golden Frieza is actually a lot more stronger than the original in the Tournament of Power. And, of course, Raditz and Nappa, they're both extremely powerful. And not to mention, they got their ace in the hold, and that's Gohan. 
Gohan here is extremely strong. I would not say as strong as Goku, but he's definitely probably equal to Vegeta, but maybe even stronger, because Gohan's potential makes absolutely no sense. Not to mention, he can make Super Saiyan 4 with his potential unleashed, which is insanity in terms of power. So he might be even stronger than Vegeta. Now, Vegeta here does still have Super Saiyan Blue. All that's the exact same. He still has Super Saiyan 4, which he does prefer to use Super Saiyan 4. Though, the maximum power is not as strong as Blue, but the stamina doesn't drain at all. While Super Saiyan Blue exerts a lot more energy. So, he wants to conserve energy since he's fighting all the other 11 universes. And, you know, then he got an hour-long fight, so he wants to save his energy. Most of the fighting in the Tournament of Power goes the same um, we're gonna go up to when Kale and Khalifa fight Goku, and they're very interested in fighting Goku. Now, Goku was excited to actually fight some other Saiyans, and a lot of the fighting will be done the same, but this time, Goku's actually in base form, fighting, uh, Super Saiyan Kale. Um, or not Super Saiyan Kale, Super Saiyan Khalifa. Super Saiyan Kale would be a bad idea. Uh, well, she still would go Legendary Super Saiyan and attack Goku when she sees that Khalifa's losing. But Goku would easily manhandle them. He's just kind of testing them and seeing how strong they really are. You know, Goku's far more superior to them. Now, of course, Goku would then get split off, as then it was time for the big fight. Jiren is still in the Tournament of Power, and Belmont knows how powerful Goku is. If they take out Goku, then they should be able to take out everybody else. And so he tells Jiren to go fight Goku. So, most of the beginning of the fight would happen the same. Goku in base form... We'll try to fire a Kamehameha, and instead of it just not doing anything, Jiren would have to put up a hand to block it and slap it away with a little bit of effort. Super Saiyan 1 would obviously moop knock Jiren back a little bit. Super Saiyan 2, they would trade blows back and forth. Goku would not hold back, and at this point, he would go Super Saiyan Blue and begin fighting Jiren. It would be a pretty tough battle, uh, but Jiren's still stronger than Goku in terms at this point. Uh, but Jiren's still holding back. Now, Goku would then go into his Super Saiyan 4... And he would showcase a form that he was actually been working on. Now, they would do their little battles in Super Saiyan 4. And Goku would showcase God Key in the Super Saiyan 4. You can call it Limit Breaker. It's when he mixes his God Key with Super Saiyan 4, making his strongest form that he can do. Now, this would actually be a really intense battle, kind of like Ultra Instinct versus Jiren. But once when Jiren showcases his full power against Goku, Goku would start to be on the losing end as he's losing energy fast. So, Goku would then use a Spirit Bomb and throw it at Jiren. The same thing happens here, to where Jiren does, with a lot of effort, he does overpower Goku, and Goku would fall into the Spirit Bomb. Now, everybody thinks that Goku died here, as they don't sense his energy. But, until the ground begins to shake... And a massive beam of light shoots up as Goku stands in a brand new form. Now, this isn't Ultra Instinct. This isn't Super Saiyan 4. Goku has pushed the limit of his primal state to a new level. With the God Key as well. His fur was white and his eyes were red. And he had a strange reddish white aura around his body. And his power level was terrifying. Goku here has reached the next stage of evolution in the Super Saiyan 4 tree. He has reached Super Saiyan 5. Goku would then look at his hand. The power was extraordinary. It almost felt like he was going to explode if he wasn't careful. And Goku's never felt power like this. This dwarfs any other power he's ever felt. And he's always thought, is there another level past 4? Is there always another level? Now, Beerus was absolutely shocked at the power all the gods were shocked they've never sensed power like this now goku would appear right in front of jiren and easily do multiple punches on him knocking jiren halfway across the ring and this would do some bad damage to jiren now how powerful is this version of goku well with super saiyan 5 this version of goku is far stronger than his mastered ultra instinct self in the tournament of power far stronger as you guys remember how powerful Goku truly is, he's had a whole nother lifetime. On top of the fact he already was nearly Super Saiyan Blue levels when he quit in GT. So he is beyond powerful here. Beyond powerful. And I want Super Saiyan 5 to be a special form. Kind of like going the more Saiyan way than an angel way of power. 
So Super Saiyan 5 Goku here is far stronger than himself when he was a Master Ultra Instinct, but this form doesn't have any drawbacks, it doesn't have any stamina issues, or nothing. This is a perfect battle form. Now, Jiren has no chance against Goku. The beating will be pretty similar against Master Ultra Instinct versus base Jiren, until Jiren would then break his limit and go into his little full power state, or you can call it the limit breaker state. Now, Jiren would actually put up a pretty decent fight against Goku, but Goku wouldn't really be that worried about it. He would kind of manhandle Jiren even after the fact, and after a full power Kamehameha, he would easily knock Jiren off the ring, knocking him out. Now, the issue with Topo here is that Topo would be fighting Vegeta, but he would lose. Most of the tournament would go down the same uh, with Kefla in Super Saiyan 2 uh, fighting Goku. Goku would easily overpower them, no issue. Goku would want to end this tournament fast, so he would basically just do a massive key blast and knocked, knock out pretty much almost everybody in the ring, and Goku would pretty much be crowned crown the winner, and yeah, it would go really easy for them. It would be a pretty easy win. Now, with the Super Dragon Balls, Goku would wish for all the universes that were gone to be brought back, which everybody was happy that it was done, and Goku would have a little talk with Jiren and state, Jiren, you pushed me to new limits, I want to thank you, and we gotta do this again sometime. They would all teleport away, and they would all return home to live in peace. What if GT Goku is reborn with his powers and memories finale? Thank you guys so much for the support on this series, I really much appreciate it, and be sure to look out for the movie so you can watch all the parts put together. Now, last that we did kick off, there isn't no Goku Black arc. So, after the Tournament of Power, which we all know that Goku won, what else is there? Well, there is Broly. Well, if you guys remember, Frieza was really the main guy who basically found Broly and took him in. Now, it is true that chi Lion and Lemo did find him, but remember, they basically brought Broly to Frieza thinking that they could make a lot of money. Well, Frieza's not actually alive in this what-if, if you guys remember that in the Tournament of Power, Frieza was brought back to life by Whis as it was a promise. Now, also because it was a little request that Beerus did, but would Beerus do it against Frieza? Because Frieza didn't really have a massive role in it, as if it wasn't for Frieza helping Goku, they would have lost. So, I do believe that Beerus probably wouldn't say anything, so Frieza's 24 hours would run out, and he would be sent back to hell, along with his family. Now, would chi Lai and Lemo still do something with Broly? I would think so, as Broly has way too much power to just be left there. Now, of course, Paragus still does want revenge against Vegeta. So, Paragus would still want to try and see if maybe he can join in on the Frieza Force. Whoever's in charge, maybe he can even take over the Frieza Force and he can, you know, own it. But that's a pretty big thing to fry, but it is possible because Broly, if you remember, Broly's extraordinarily powerful. He can pretty much take down anybody that's in his way, not really anybody can beat him. So I do believe that they would start off slow. Paragus knows to get off this planet, he has to own the Frieza army. Maybe he'll rename it. Maybe he'll call it the Saiyan Empire again or something like that. But using his son and how powerful Broly is, they would quickly rise up the ranks and very quickly gain the top spot as everybody was afraid of Broly and Paragus kind of being the mastermind can control his son. Now Broly would obviously do anything for his dad. Now this Broly would basically be longer so he wouldn't meet Goku and Vegeta at the same time as the original. Maybe add a couple more months, potentially another year. Now during this time, would Frieza's men still collect the Dragon Balls? I would say yes, just because for plot inducements for the reason why they're there. Now Paragus would wish for the Dragon Balls as he could wish back for younger youth or maybe even immortality. Because Paragus does is getting old, remember Paragus is at least in his 80s or higher, so he is starting to feel the age of his Saiyan. So, he does want to maybe look at making himself younger again, so he can basically rule the Empire. And maybe even make his son stronger somehow, or maybe make him stronger. He doesn't know yet, as remember the dragon has, I believe, two wishes, so they can use those wishes to do whatever they want. Now, of course, Paragus does promise chi Lai and Lemo will be paid very close, as chi Lai and Lemo actually became very good friends with Broly. As they've been together for almost a year, chi Lai and Lemo are Broly's only true friends that Broly really does care about. Now, would Broly here necessarily... He, now, this version of Broly is smarter because he's hanging out with chi Lai and Lemo. He knows speech a little bit better. He's not as childish. He still has that innocent side of him. He's still kind of childish, but not as immature as the original. Now, 
Paragus, of course, has been training his son, not to mention there is way more technology for him to help train Broly, so Broly in this what if is actually a little bit stronger, because Broly here is fighting more technology, fighting more bots that can maybe hurt him, not much, and not to mention he also has healing chambers that he can go into and heal himself up. Now what Paragus would do, is Paragus would have Broly grow his strength, being very careful, he would also modify the necklace to where this electric shock collar would pretty much be a higher voltage in case Broly does lose control fully, Paragus would be able to stop him. Now chi of course hates that thing, but that's for later on. Now, Paragus would take Broly around, and Paragus would actually make Broly fight aliens and other creatures. Some of them are pretty powerful, and Broly would just grow stronger and stronger each battle. Now, once when Paragus think that he's most definitely ready, they would all arrive on Earth. Now, Paragus wants to kill Vegeta and whoever's in his way first, then go about the Dragon Balls. So, Goku and Vegeta would still show up the exact same as before. Bulma and Whis would, of course, be following around, and the fight would still be the exact same. Aside, there is no Frieza there. The Dragon Balls are all there, of course, but either way, there's no Frieza. So, Paragus would tell his son Broly to attack, and Broly would begin fighting Vegeta. Now, Vegeta would co commend Broly, saying you're not half bad. Vegeta would actually have to go Super Saiyan first to fight base Broly. Now, Vegeta would then go Super Saiyan 2, and Broly would start showing off more of, his, more of his power as he gets higher and higher. Vegeta would then showcase Super Saiyan God, as Broly would then f start turning into his Akari state, losing more and more control, reaching his limit. Paragus is going to reach and turn on the remote, but it was gone, as chi Line, the original, has stolen it and taken it away. Now, most of the fighting goes the exact same between Vegeta and Broly, as Vegeta wouldn't rely on Super Saiyan 4, just because Super Saiyan Blue is stronger, so that's why he's kind of relying on that instead right now. And But either way, even with Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan 4, he would still lose and get kind of beat up, as it was Goku's turn. Now, Goku would actually push Broly and give him a really tough battle. Now, Broly would then... And, and his anger, a massive key blast would actually hit Paragus in his anger and actually kill him. Now this would make Broly snap, as Broly would then turn Super Saiyan and begin his battle on Goku. Now Goku here, turning into the Super Saiyan 4, he's able to fight Broly pretty evenly matched. Now Goku was amazed at Broly's strength, at how he's just continuing to rise. Now Goku knows that he has to push his power, and Goku would stream and turn into a Super Saiyan 5 as Broly turned into his full power Super Saiyan mode, or Legendary Super Saiyan. Now Goku would actually overpower Broly in this form, as Goku here is far superior to Broly. Very similar to how Gogeta handled him, Goku would be doing the same. Now Goku charged up a full power Kamehameha to kill Broly, but chi -Lai was able to summon the dragon and wish Broly back to safety on planet Vampa. Now, Broly would arrive back, and he was in anguish of his father. chi Lai and them would then arrive and take care of Broly, and they would tell him, saying, Look, Broly, we can help you, and this empire that your father built will we'll take care of that. Now, Broly was happy that he was saved by his friends, and Goku was very much relieved that Broly was saved, as he's definitely wanting to go train with Broly. He would go to Planet Vampa, meet up with Broly, and they would become allies, wanting to fight more. Now, now we're going to go into... I would say the superhero arc. Let's go into that. Just because it seems like it's right after the Broly start. Now, Broly would be on Beerus' planet. All that happens the exact same. But Beerus interested in chi Lai, Beerus liking Broly. All that would happen the same. All of the events would pretty much happen the same. All up until Gohan here would still get his beast form. There would be some minor changes with Gohan having Mystic Super Saiyan 4. He would be able to handle himself way better against Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. But if you guys remember, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 was made to be a perfect copy of the other guys. So they're even stronger than the one before, same as Cell Max. Now Piccolo here having his potential unlock turning into Orange Piccolo. With himself pushing his limit, I would say that he has been way more powerful than his previous self. Way more powerful than his OG self in the original. This orange Piccolo is far stronger than the original, being able to keep up with Gohan. Now, once when Gohan snaps, he would then turn into Beast Mode. Now, Beast Gohan here is insanity. Now, if you guys remember here, this is basically like Mystic 2, pretty much. Now, Gohan here, with his Super Saiyan 4 and Mystic, is he as strong as Beast? Absolutely not. This Beast form is Gohan's most powerful form, it has no match at all. 
This beast Gohan would easily take down Cell like the original and kill him, and the day was saved. Goku and Vegeta would not need to go to Earth to fight Cell Max just because, remember, Gohan can handle the situation. Now Gohan and Piccolo were actually caught up, and this actually excited Goku. Now Goku would find out about it, seeing them both, and he definitely wants to fight them again. Especially Piccolo too. And especially Gohan with his new form? This guy is Saiyan blood pumping. He definitely wants to fight him in a training session one day. Which Gohan happily agrees. Now, considering that Gohan is pretty calm in his beast state, does this mean that Gohan can access the form pretty easily? Just for what it purposes, I'm going to say that he can with some difficulty, but he can go beast mode. Same with Piccolo turning into his orange Piccolo form. Now, we would probably have a little mini arc with Goku and Gohan, and they would fight each other, and maybe Gohan would go beast and Goku Super Saiyan 5. That would be an epic matchup. Maybe Goku would make a comment on, on, on how Gohan's stealing his, stealing his hair color. And it would be an awesome fight. Who would win? Uh, I would probably say Goku would still win. Maybe. But their fight wouldn't be concluded. Because it would stop halfway. With Pan needing something. Or Videl, you know, complaining about something. Gohan has to stop. Or Chi Chi could yell. Who knows. Now, Goku vs. Orange Piccolo would be a really, really good fight. I would love to see Piccolo fighting Goku again. And Goku would obviously beat Piccolo. But Piccolo would get some good hits on Goku putting some scratches on him and Goku was so happy about Piccolo being that strong like Piccolo was a beast now we're gonna go into the Granola arc now most of the Granola arc would happen the same here why because Granola would still wish for of course to be the most powerful being in the universe being number one so this would make him automatically stronger I would say than Goku and Vegeta currently but the issue is is that of his lifespan if you guys remember, Granoli only had about a couple of years left of his lifespan, or even less. And that's the kind of price to pay for power. And if you guys remember, Goku and Vegeta are way stronger than they originally are. Same with a lot of other guys. I mean, thousands upon thousands of times stronger. Granola here, I believe, would still get stronger, but he was much older. His lifespan was kind of like gas. It was very, very, very short. So, he would actually fight Goku and Vegeta. Now, this is where Vegeta would actually showcase Ultra Ego. And this impressed Goku a lot. I remember, Vegeta has been watching Beerus train, so he has learned to access the power of the God of Destruction. Now, Vegeta would fight Granola, and it would be a pretty cool battle. And once when Granola starts fighting Goku here, he used up too much of his life force, as he's exerting too much energy. Now, Granola would look like a frail old man. He can no longer fight anymore. He stops himself as he can't fight no more. Now this is when Gas would appear. Gas has also made the same wish, being even stronger than that. Now Gas at this point is already starting to look a little bit frail, and he would begin his assault on Goku. Now Gas is far too powerful for Goku and Vegeta here to fight, as they're already exhausted from having to fight Granola. Now we do know that the Namekian does heal Goku and Vegeta, but in this what if I'm going to say they didn't? So Goku and Vegeta have no energy, Goku has one idea. Wait a minute. Why don't we do Fusion Vegeta? Now Vegeta is obviously very much against that, but Goku states, no wait a minute, if we are able to potentially f do Fusion, maybe we might be able to beat this guy. And Vegeta's like, but how would that work? And Goku's like, well, I do know that you have Super Saiyan 5, and that Vegeta can access the form, he just doesn't see a need to, as Ultra Ego was his go-to form. He just started learning Super Saiyan 5, and he knows that if he can basically learn it, it's Vegeta, he can access it. And Vegeta thinks to himself, he's like, fine, we'll do that. So with a lot of hurdle, and very similar to when Goku turns Super Saiyan 4, with that, like, the scene where he was, like, like you know, I mean, like, touching, like, the water or something like that, remember that? And he turned the Uzaru and turned into a baby, remember that? Vegeta would have that same kind of thing, and Vegeta would then... Ascend to Super Saiyan 5. His power was amazing. Not as strong as Ultra Ego, but they're pretty much hand in hand. Pretty e pretty even. Ultra Ego just has Hulk Hakai abilities. Now, Goku is obviously weak enough to where his power is equal to Vegeta. They would both do the fusion dance and a new being was born. Super Saiyan 5 Gogeta. Now, Goku recalls when they turned Super Saiyan 4 and defeated Omega Shenron. This power was pale in comparison to Super you know, like, this power was far superior. Super Saiyan 4, Gogeta, pale in comparison to this guy. 
Now, he would easily demolish Gas and force Gas to use more power. Now, Gas would actually push himself so hard that he would basically turn into dust and bones, and bones to dust, and he would actually kill himself using too much power. Now, the two would defuse in a couple of minutes, and Goku would then hold Granola, as Granola would then pass on, as he accepted his fate, and he accepts the fact that the Saiyans are not all evil, and that this was a stupid plan. You know, he pretty much accepts his fate, and Granola passes on. Now, since this is the case, Goku and Vegeta would then return home to enjoy a life of peace. Now, there would be a tournament that did start up. As this was the current tournament, Goku would be dressed in his original blue with yellow pants, the typical GTG, and he would meet Oob, who was a young kid at the time. Oob would battle him very similar to the original, and Goku was very impressed. And Oob was the exact same strength as the original. Uh, the, the fight would pretty much play out the exact same as before. And Goku would offer to go train him. Telling him, hey, how about if I go to your village and I train with you, I can make you super strong. Now, he would obviously agree with that. And the two would fly off to begin a new adventure. And that is it for this wave, you guys. Thank y'all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I had a blast with it. I love the series so much. And make sure, guys, to go check out the memberships. Show some support to the channel. I really appreciate it. Go join the Discord as well. Uh, you guys can see perks and everything. And thank you guys so much. We'll see you to 10,000 subscribers. And I will talk to you all later. Yes.